Hello everyone, welcome to the AWS PyCharm tutorial series. So, after installing all the required dependencies like AWS SAM, AWS CLI, and the PyCharm AWS Toolkit, let's get started setting up the project. As you can see, the latest PyCharm interfaces they are offering is 2020.3. Let's start. I will click on New Project. Basically, I will be choosing the AWS serverless application. This will be my project location where my code is going to reside. The runtime is Python 3.8, and we are using the default SAM template over here. There is something new added called package type. If you hover over here, there is something called zip and image. Zip is basically archiving and storing it into Amazon S3, and image is storing the Docker images in AWS ECR, also known as Amazon Elastic Container Registry. Then I will click on Create. Right now, it is generating the SAM template, as you see here in the bottom. You can also see that PyCharm has picked the AWS credentials, which we used in our earlier video, for setting up the access keys. You can also check that it is currently picking up the Asia region. But if you can switch to different regions like North Virginia, Ohio, Oregon, etc. Before getting deep into the project layout, I would suggest if you want to get more information about the AWS Toolkit, please visit the website aws.amazon.com slash PyCharm, which is offered by AWS. This toolkit is developed by AWS, so over here you can see what are the features they are providing, along with their recorded webinars and all the other information you can find on the website. You can see how this project looks like. This is a small kind of blueprint or starter template for starting up the project. The heart of this application is template.yaml file. It looks similar to CloudFormation. It's basically an extension to the CloudFormation template. If you have previously worked with CloudFormation, then it's basically known as infrastructure as code. It is a tool from AWS that allows you to spin up resources quickly and everything is being managed via code. If you don't use AWS and you rely on different cloud vendors, then you can use an open source tool provided by HashiCorp called Terraform. Terraform is an open source infrastructure as code software tool that provides a consistent CLI workflow to manage hundreds of cloud services. The great advantage of using Terraform is that you can use it with any cloud provider. As you can see in the template over here, there are things like description and template version. This is the global information about your functions. All the functions will be getting timeout after three seconds. You can also define your memory requirements. These are resources you can see. We will be registering our APIs under this Resources section. Code under URI, the directory in which the code resides, you can see this over here. Handler is the combination of file under name and function under name. Lambda Handler, you can say it's a pure Python function. It takes a set of events, and from that event, you'll be getting all the information like the request body, etc. And finally, this is the structure of how you are going to return your output. So this is the basic layout, and there is something called events and context. When Lambda runs your function, it passes a context object to the handler. This object provides methods and properties that give information about the invocation, function, and execution environment. As you can see on my screen, this is a list of properties which you can pass in your Lambda context. I will provide the link in the description if you want to go into more details about the Lambda context. Apart from context, there is one more thing passed called events. According to AWS, 
An event is a JSON formatted document. It contains data for a Lambda function to process. The Lambda runtime converts the event to an object and passes it to your function code. It is usually of the Python dict type. It can also be list, str for string, int, float, or the none type. This is a sample event which can be used for testing the functions as you can see over here. What are the data that normally gets passed to the Lambda function? The sample shows how we are passing the request body. And also there is a tests directory. If you want to write some unit tests, your Lambda functions locally can use the same sample event as provided in the events directory. If you want to get into more details about serverless functions, then there is something called template anatomy, as you can see on my screen. Here you will get more information about what data we can pass into the SAM template. I will put the link in the description so you can find more details. There are lots of properties over here which you can pass to your serverless functions. You can set the events, environments, handlers, and even you can set the memory size. If you set the memory size, you have to give it in megabytes. So finally, this is how the SAM template looks like. You will feel intimidated at first, but don't worry, we will be exploring it step by step. In the upcoming video, I will show you how to run the Lambda function locally using Docker containers.